And we are back with the fourth and final part of this week's Bible study. And we are going through uh, the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version. We have just completed the book of Ezra today. And uh, next week we're, we're going to be doing Nehemiah, which both of those books had at once been combined in one book. Uh, and they are now separated into Ezra and Nehemiah, but they had once at one time been one book. Um, this is the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. Um, when I ended um, the last part, I mentioned Yeshua, Jesus. Jesus is the Savior. He is the Messiah. And his first coming, he came to die on a cross. Um, he was the sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of the world. Um, he was the ultimate sacrifice, and no one could do that for us but him, because he came into the world sinless, blameless, spotless, and he was the only one that could do that for us. We could not do it for ourselves. We can't do it for ourselves. So he is, he did that for us. And that was a very unselfish and very loving act that he did. Um, love that we can't even comprehend it so deep. But he loved us that much to give up his heavenly estate, to come here, to become a human being and live among us and then die for us. Salvation can only be achieved through him, through Yeshua, through Jesus. And salvation is deliverance and from sin and their consequences. Um, Yeshua, his very name means salvation. And Yeshua took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and reconciled to the Father. The other thing he did was um, he took a, a beating before he actually went to the cross that nearly took his life, and by his stripes we are healed. He took our illnesses. He took our sins, iniquities, our illnesses all with him. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 5 Verse 8 says, but God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. There are not many paths to heaven. Yes, the world will tell you that. The world will tell you everyone will get to heaven too. It's not true. None of that is true. We need to um, stop listening to the world and start tuning into the truth. Um, the truth of the matter is Yeshua said there will be people that stand before him and say, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out demons? And he will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I knew you not. And they will not enter heaven. They will be cast into outer darkness. So that doesn't tell you that everybody goes to heaven. And there is not many paths that lead to heaven. There is one. Yeshua said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. And no, you can't get there by praying to Mary. No one should be praying to Mary either. You know, our God is powerful enough. He doesn't need an intercessor to go through. He's our intercessor. Yeshua's our intercessor. He's strong enough. Anyone that did what he did for us is powerful and strong. Actually go through what he went through. None of us could do that. So no, he does not need an intercessor to say it's okay to forgive us. No, we go to him directly. We can go to him directly. And when Yeshua died on the cross, the veil was ripped from top to bottom so that we can go boldly before the throne of God. But your heart needs to be pure. You need to, to get rid of the sin and you, because sin cannot stand before a holy God. So sin will not enter heaven. 
it's not going to happen. And if you have not been born again and saved, born of the spirit, not of the flesh, you cannot get reborn again in the flesh, but you can get reborn in the spirit and you're born of his spirit and cleansed because of his blood. By his blood, you are cleansed. You are washed clean. There is nothing you can do to make that happen. And he made that clear um, also to Nicodemus about being born again. And Nicodemus was a Pharisee uh, in his time that came and asked, he would come and ask Yeshua. He, he saw that Yeshua was sent of God um, for the things and the miracles that he witnessed himself. And Yeshua had a conversation with him, um, basically, you know, telling Nicodemus, you know, that to enter the kingdom of heaven, one must be born again of water and of spirit. One must be born from above. And that's the spirit, not of the flesh. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 say, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not based on deeds so that no one may boast. I'm going to continue with verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua, for good deeds which God prepared beforehand, so we might walk in them. So basically, it is not by our own doings. It's by grace that we have been saved, through our faith that we have been saved. And also, it's a gift of God. God sent his only son into the world that we might be saved and have eternal life. If we believe in him, so it's not based on anything we could do. So no one can be up in heaven saying, well, I did more than you. And, you know, <laughs> human beings tend to do that. They like to do comparisons. Well, there's no comparison comparing. We're all equal. We're all going to be equal in heaven in that, in that respect, because Yeshua did it for all of us. So no one can say, well, I did better than you did. And that's, you know, no, there's none of that. And that will not happen in heaven. So there will be no boasting of, of no pride. In other words, um, we know what happened to a, a certain fallen angel and, and his, the third, the third of the angels that followed him, what pride did to him. And he can no longer reside in heaven and he will be eternally in the lake of fire. First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess them, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. He meaning Yeshua who died for us. He is the only one worthy to do that. So if you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you desire to do that now, you can pray with me. Yeshua, meaning Jesus, uh, for those that are wondering and might be stumbling over this. Um, his, other, his name is also Jesus. Um, dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner and I have broken your holy laws and I understand sin cannot stand before you and it separates me from you eternally. I thank you for sending your one and only son that can make that right for me because I know I couldn't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. I need a savior. And you gave that savior in Yeshua, in Jesus. And I believe that he came for the sole purpose of dying for sins and to save the world of their sins. I believe he died on a cross. I believe that he was buried. I believe he rose again and I believe he is alive and well and sitting at your right hand, Father. I believe he's coming again to rule and reign and I believe he is coming very soon. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be a lost soul forever. I want to become a child of God. So today, today I am coming before you, Yeshua. 
I am asking you to forgive me of my sins. I am asking you to help me to change my life. I'm asking you to forgive me and cleanse me of my sins. I'm asking for that salvation, that gift of salvation that you offer. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that gift. And I thank you also for the gift of eternal life that goes with that. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. I thank you, Yeshua. And I believe through you and you alone that I am saved, I am healed, I am born again, and I am delivered and free from sin and the consequences of them. I believe through you and you alone I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Yeshua, Jesus, precious, mighty, and awesome name. Amen and amen. And if you have said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. And I would strongly encourage that you get into a Bible-based congregation or a Messianic congregation, one that opens the Bible and teaches from the Bible. It is so important. You can go into fancy buildings that do all this hoopla, and uh, yet they don't teach from the Bible. They teach their own doctrine. Well, that is not where you need to be. You just got saved. You just got born into the family of God. You need to know the heart of, of our Father. And the Father isn't concerned with religion. He doesn't care if you're Presbyterian, if you're Methodist, if you're Baptist, if you're Lutheran, if you're Catholic, if you're this, you're that. That doesn't matter. In heaven, <laughs> saved, the saved, the born again are going to come from all corners of the world. Um, and denominations, there will be no denominations. There really, we need to cut that denominational barrier and teach from the Word of God, from the Bible. You know, we at Waymaker, Messianic, Jewish and Christian Center in USA are not denominational. We go based on chapter 2 um, of Ephesians, the one new man, the believers of Yeshua, the Jewish and Gentile or Christian believers, I should say, uh, believers. Born again believers in Yeshua together in one body because we make up the body. He is the head, we are the body. So we are based on that. So it is very important. Um, it's, it, it is very important that you get uh, proper nourishment, um, and your nourishment is the Word of God. So you need to be taught the Word of God. Um, the other thing that you can do um, to know that you're being taught properly as well is get a copy of the Bible. And you can go to Bible Hub or Bible Gateway. There's multiple versions of the Bible. The only ones I'm going to tell you to stay away from are Queen James version of the Bible, an abomination to our Father in Heaven. He does not ordain that at all. And 20, some of the 21st century Bibles who have taken out names uh, uh, from the Bible, including the name of Jesus, um, which is totally ridiculous. So I would just stay away from 21st century Bibles uh, because we are not to tamper with the word of God. We're not to add to it. We're not to subtract from it. And it actually says in the Bible, in both the Old and the New Testament, if we add to the words of God, he can he he reserves the right to basically add the plagues within the book of book of the Bible, and if we subtract, he can subtract our names from the book of life. So you know that's very serious when uh, we're hearing that, and that is a word of God uh, because that is God's declaration that we should not be tampering with His word. He's the Creator. He created everything. We have no right to tamper with His word. No, that word is there for a reason, and uh, I just really wouldn't want to be the people that have, have tampered with the Word of God and have to answer for that. But indeed, they will have to one day.
because a, a lot of the tampering with the word of God is misleading people from, from away from the truth. You know, and the truth is so very vitally important. So the other thing, when you become a child of God um, and you're asking the Holy Spirit to come live inside of you, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discernment. And we live in such a such a world where there's so much deceit going on. And and understand that was present even during Yeshua's time on earth because he warned us of that. And he warned us that in the last days it would be intensified and much more increased. And um, the end times began when he died on the cross. So, you, you know, that was over, that, that was over 2,000 years ago. So uh, you can imagine at this point in time uh, where we are. Um, no, no one knows the day or the hour, but we need to know the season that we're in and to recognize the things that are going on in our world. And we can see a whole lot of things going on in our world that we've never seen before. Some really crazy things. And where good is being called evil and evil is being called good, we need to separate ourselves from that. Do not get caught into all of the, the things that you see on television. Uh, I, you need to separate yourself. You're a child of God. You need to be discerning. Uh, what is truth and what God would want. And how do you know what God would want? Start reading his word. Uh, it's very, very clear what God wants. Um, and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in your, you know, in your reading, because he will bring things to light as well. Also, setting aside prayer time and communing with God, getting to know when he's communicating with you, because he loves, he loves relationship with his children. He doesn't care about religion at all, but he does care about relating with him. And, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, when we go back to the very beginning when humanity was created, he communed with Adam and Eve. They blew it. <laughs> but he wanted to restore that with the children of Israel um, at Mount Sinai. They were frightened. Um, they were frightened when... They heard the trumpets and the thundering and the, the mountain was quaking and there was fire shooting out all over the place. Um, they were like, uh, no, go ahead, Moses, you can have a relationship. We'll just do whatever you, you know, whatever you tell us that he, he has told us, but we don't want to hear him talk any, anymore. So they kind of blew it with relationship. Um, we have another chance at that and, and we have it through Yeshua. So we can still have that relationship and many of us do and it's awesome so get to know the heart of our father and you will see the heart of our father in his word and one of the things that Adonai loves to do is to bless his own and um, in Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 27 Adonai spoke to Moses telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons to gather Benai Israel, to gather the children of Israel. And he wanted to give them his blessing and put his name on them. So when you are born again, God does put his name on you. And also the Holy Spirit seals you. You are a child of God and you can also receive this blessing. In Hebrew, it goes like this. Ivarekaka Adonai. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and Amen. Well, that is the end of this week's uh, Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. And we will be back again next week. We are going to do the book of Nehemiah. So we're going to see the other section of uh, what was once one book 
of Ezra and Nehemiah. We've now we've done Ezra today, and next week we will we will be doing Nehemiah. So God bless each and every one of you, and we will see you again next week.